What is up and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Flip and Stoop. I'm getting them prepping to package items <clears throat> at this very moment. I hope everybody's sales is up. What I want to talk about in this video is I think a lot of people quit reselling um, due to the process that it takes to get consistent sales. I think more people quit during that slow process than anything else. And what I've realized is it's not only resale. It's not only eBay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want I, I want you to know starting a second business, um, <clears throat> we did our first clean out probably a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, it's the same thing. It, it's a different, it's a whole different structure. It's a whole different thing. We get to interact with people live. Um, that's fun, but you can do that as well in reselling. You can, you can reach out to people in the thrift stores, the garage sales, you make, make that your fun, right? Um, building, like I said, be, beginning to build the second business, it's the same thing. It's a, it's a patient game. Now I'm not telling you it's a waiting game where you just sit around and twiddle your thumbs and the same goes for eBay. And I think this is the main reason people give up on eBay and people quit is because the results don't come fast enough. I am not. I don't have million dollar businesses, but we have been able to build an eBay business that has produced us enough income to live off them. Um, and then some, <clears throat> and it's getting that way as well with the, uh, decluttering business. Now, during that, d during that time, especially with the d eBay, especially with eBay, there's been multiple times I've wanted to give up. There's been probably more times than than I was excited about it, right? That I wanted to give up because I just didn't know if the energy I was going to put into this thing was going to pan off. And it will pan off if you don't give up. Um, this is the big... Like, I, I just shared a post a little bit ago. Uh, um, not discouragement. I'm trying to look for the word. I'm, I'm looking for the proper word. But, but basically, lack of belief in yourself, self-doubt, self-doubt is what I was looking for, is the killer of 90% of dreams. There ain't a single person that walks this planet today. Maybe there's some that are four or five and haven't had them thoughts yet. But if you're in your, if you're in your late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, 30s, 40s, 50, 60, whatever you are, you've had a million dollar business idea. There, You've had, unless I'm like the rare, uh, and I'm not, because I talk to many other people where they'll say, oh man, I had this idea to start this. And I'm like, dude, that's a million dollar idea. If you take that idea and you run with it and you go ahead and be broke for the next year or two, because that's what it takes, right? I'm not saying always it takes that, but you have to be dumping it back into the business you're trying to build, just like eBay, right? You shouldn't be pulling profit your first month. If you're trying to pull profit your first month, and I'm not saying you can't do that. You can sell your very first item and become, and, 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 and that's profit, right? If you take your uh, pair of jeans you bought for seven bucks, eight bucks at a thrift store, God knows what it is anymore. I haven't been in a thrift store in quite some time. Um, but if you take this, when, when, when I bought it, $7 pair of jeans at a thrift store and you sell it for 25 bucks, you made some profit on that pair of jeans. The smart thing to do is take that profit and buy two pairs of them jeans so you can double, you can continue to double your profit or whatever margin you're pulling, right? You might not quite double it, um, but you know, that's the goal for most resellers in the beginning. You're trying to get a 50% margin, 40 to 50% margin from your first sale. So that way you can take that money and invest it back into two to three items and continue to do that, and within due time, you will be doing pretty good, right? That That's the whole analogy behind reselling. It's not that difficult. Everybody's got a cell phone in your hand. People today, me included, have just become lazy, right? And, and I'm saying that because I found in certain aspects of my life, I started thinking, well, because I'm running this business and trying to start another one, I don't have to do X, Y, Z anymore. Well, that's a bunch of crack of bullshit. Yes, I do. I still do need to do laundry. I still do need to wash dishes. I still do need to cook dinner for my beautiful fiance, right? So I, I found myself getting lazy at times in the thrift stores. I found myself not getting lazy yet in the decluttering. I, my, my mind went there for a minute. I had to talk my way out of it, right? Um, so I think people 
want instant gratification in the beginning. I'm here to tell you, reselling, building a reselling business, the structure is different than building a decluttering business or a brick and mortar clothes store or whatever it might be, a coffee shop or whatever, right? The structure's different. The concept's all the same. Your first year, don't plan on making a shit ton of money, right? Second year, probably not. If you do it right, you shouldn't be making a lot of money. Even if you are making a lot of money, that money should be getting dumped back in to more inventory, um, advertisement, marketing, things of this nature. I overlook all that a lot, especially with marketing. I'm going to tell you this. You can have the best product in the world. If you can't market, nobody knows you have that product and it doesn't matter. It does not. You can come with... You can make the latest design of AI or whatever it is. And I want to touch on AI too, even on eBay here shortly. But I'm, I'm going to get into that in a minute. And if I forget it, somebody please remind me. You can have the best idea in the world. You can formulate a coffee cup that feels I don't know. You can have the best idea in the world. And if you can't market it, it's going to go nowhere. M many, many dreams, many million dollar businesses are in the grave. You go to grave say you want to find the most dreams ever that was never that was never lived fully or the most business ideas, business thoughts, million dollar, billion dollar, multi billion dollar business ideas. It's in the cemetery. They never they had self doubt and they didn't believe in themselves and they never took action. I, I use this analogy a million times in my videos with Colonel Sanders. He didn't even get started till sixty seven years old. He was telling people he's, he he fried the best chicken for years and nobody believed him. Right. And then he and then he opened Kentucky Fried Chicken and franchised it and so on and so forth. Right. He lived out his dream before he's no longer here. So there's a lot of dreams in the cemeteries. And it's crazy because I used to mow cemeteries. And it's very true, though, because self-doubt kills most dreams. Your self-doubt about I'm not going to be able to get the ball rolling with eBay. If that is in the back of your mind, you're probably right. And it's sad, but you, you can't overcome that. You got to find a way to talk yourself out of that. You got to get out of that shallow thinking. You got to get out away from people that think that way as well, right? You have to try your best to surround yourself with people that are trying to do the same thing as you, which is a great thing for the groups, which is a great thing for the YouTube channels of people trying to do the same thing. You should be listening to them videos. You should not all content, and I'm not saying my content's great, Right. I'm not saying that at all. Not all content, but there's there's most content that is on YouTube about reselling is beneficial to a degree. OK, because one, it mentally keeps you there that there's other people out here doing this. If you surround yourself with everybody that is working a nine to five and you're trying to sell a business, it's going to be difficult for you. They they don't have the same belief system. They don't have. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a nine to five period. Okay. I've worked plenty of them. My, my family does still, um, my fiance still does, but she is also helping me build the decluttering business. But <clears throat> if you're around nothing but people that work a nine to five, you're going to hear a lot of complaining and you got to get away from that shit. You, cause let's face it. They're getting, they're getting robbed. If you're working, I don't care how much money you're making. I don't care if you're making $35 an hour. If you're making $35 an hour, you're making that company hundreds of dollars an hour. I'm telling you this now. You're getting robbed, right? You're getting you're getting robbed. Until you're on your own business and, and you build it up big enough to where you see the amount of income you're worth an hour, a day, a job, or however you want to look at it, you'll never understand what I just said. Once you do build up something enough to where you're making 50 to 150 to 250 to 500 dollars an hour, whatever, a thousand dollars an hour, whatever you build it up to, then you start realizing, oh, I have been getting robbed. Listen, if a company will hire you for $35 an hour, what you think you think you're not making them any money? That don't make no business sense whatsoever. I would never hire somebody for $35 an hour, which we did for that for more than that, actually. I would never hire somebody for $30 an hour, $35 an hour, $40 an hour if I was losing money by doing that. Why would that make sense? That makes zero sense, right? So if you're making $35 an hour, you're making that company big money, okay? 
you're only going to get paid what your what, what your value is. If you're making ten dollars an hour, it's because you're only making that company twenty, thirty, forty dollars an hour, right? <clears throat> Whatever. I don't know the exact points, but now I want to get back to the AI and the AI on when you're doing your listings. Now, there's a lot of controversy going on on AI right now, and it's very dangerous. This is just my uh, hypothesis, right? This isn't facts, but it's very dangerous. Now, I'm not saying facts about eBay. What I'm saying is you using AI to fill out your description looks fancy. Yep, it looks fancy. It looks great. Okay, now, now, now hear me out, though. This is just a theory. I'm not... You can call me a conspiracy theorist. What I don't care, right? I don't care. I don't care what people call me. If I if I cared what people called me anymore, I'd be six feet in the ground with a with a heart attack from stress, right? I, I just don't care. You can't care what others think of you. People are going to have their own opinions. Oh well, right. So the truth is, is but I do believe this, and I do believe this sound. If enough people begin to start using AI. They're programming eBay to be able to do listings without me and you. I've talked about this a while ago before the AI uh, descriptions came out. If we begin, if every one of us resellers continue to use the AI, why do you think they're doing that? They're not only doing that to make, what's up, brother? Uh, good, hey, thanks, good for seeing, or good seeing you, Vic. Sorry, I'm somewhere else right there. Um, but if we continue to use AI, it is going to eliminate us. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that sounds like, look what it's doing at your McDonald's drive through Look what it's doing where you can just, the self-checkout lines in all stores. It used to only be in Walmart around me. Now, you know, now, now, now the cashier don't even come to the register anymore in a dollar store because 99.9% .9 of the people are just using the self-checkout. What it is doing and what it is going to do to eBay, I, I firmly believe, in another couple of years, they're not going to need us. They're going to have a massive warehouse, and their AI is going to be separating and organizing and doing all the photos and doing all the listings itself. And how is that going to happen? By us using the AI. They are using us to build the AI up to get rid of us. It's happening everywhere. It's happening with phone calls. Now, like I said, that's my theory. Do I do I know for a fact that that's going to happen? I do not, but it makes sense. It would be a lot more financial. It'd be more beneficial to eBay if they didn't have to give us the cut that they get that that they do. Right? Would, would it not make business sense? Hey, eliminate all seven million resellers, eight million resellers, whatever it is now. Right? Eliminate all them. We just open a huge donation center, right? A, a massive donation centers all over the United States, and with the money with the money that we were paying all the resellers, we just open up a, a, a massive drop drop off area, and we'll have AI separate everything, do all the photos, and fill out the item descriptions. Wouldn't that make sense? They they, they just turned it into how much ever money they make now to times ten that. Right, because AI AI will be cheaper than hiring an employee, which we are their employees. If you're reselling on eBay, you're eBay's employee. Okay. Now I'm not saying that you're not micromanaging your own little business or whatever, but it is a completely different rundown than running a brick and mortar or running a uh, running a uh, a brand or you're building a brand. Right. You can't. You can like okay for for example, Tech and Sports built a brand out of his store and he did a good job on it, right? Like, so I guess you can build a brand, um, but I don't know. It, it's still, to me, building an eBay online business is completely different than building a physical business. What I mean by physical business is you are going in, in, in interacting with people, making transactions through people, um, and working, working to fix a problem live, not the internet, right? Now, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying eBay isn't a real business. It is. It's just different, right? An internet business is completely different than a, a, a brick and mortar or a, say a, we'll use mine, for example, straight the decluttering, right? Victor says, makes sense though. Um, I doubt it'll be a, in our lifetime, but I can see that happening. 
Um, yeah, no, I, with what they're doing with the AI today, I can, there's going to be some massive change within the next two years, two to five years. I'm telling you, it's going to be nuts. They want AI driving vehicles to, to overdo Ubers and all that. Like, and, and they're making it happen. Like, it's going to eliminate all these Uber jobs and everything. Cause Uber's going to be like, we'll just, we'll just pay for AI. AI is cheaper at the end, right? They are making AI more affordable. They're going to, trust me, this is my theory. They're going to make AI more affordable than hiring an employee for your salary, right? That's what they're, that's exactly going to be their intention. And what they're going to do is they're going to eliminate humans, people. Now this is the far-fetched theory. But my goal, is, my, my, what I'm thinking is, not my goal, what I'm thinking is they're trying to eliminate our value as people so the upper power or our system, I'll say, because I can't say the three-letter agencies or I can't say the word that starts with G, right? They'll eliminate my, uh, my the, the content. They're trying to get full control of everything. And if we lose our value as people, like most value, most people's value is based on what they do for a living, right? You'd be like, what do you do? I provide for my family. I am an engineer at such and such and such. I am a builder at such and such and such. I am a, uh, I'm a delivery man for, or woman for such and such, whatever, right? They, they, they basically base their identity over what they do for a living. So you strip that from everybody. Now, and, and we have no more value and we have nothing more to, you know, wake up and, and say, hey, this is my responsibility here. This is what I do. I provide for my family. Now, if they strip all that away and AI is doing everything, well, now this might not happen in our lifetime, they, which, but I do believe this is their intentions. They strip that away from everybody. They're going to be, people are going to be depressed. There's going to be too much to do. What the, I think what they're trying to do is, is limit the need for people. And once they limit the need for people, they will provide us with, they, I've heard a long time ago that our system that starts with the G, right, wants all power over food, water, and electricity, right? And they're doing a damn good job at that. They're doing a damn good. This shit we're buying in the stores and putting in our system, you don't even, we don't even know where the fuck this shit's coming from. But anyways, I don't want to get too far off my tinfoil hat. But the truth is, is I think they're trying to eliminate the need for people so they can have complete control. Because listen, our our system that starts with a G, it's all about power. It's all about power. Who's got the power and what lifestyle can they live? If they eliminate all our jobs, what do we feel worthless? And then they set us all a set, uh, just just like uh, uh, EBT. You get, you have so many kids, you get X amount of food a month and your bills are covered, right? What is that going to do to people? It's going to make them depressed, it's going to make the insurance companies have to pay for more depression pills, pharma, blow pharma up even more. I think they're really seriously trying to eliminate the need for people. Now, now, listen, that's my hypothesis. That's my theory. I'm not saying that's facts, but it sure makes a whole lot of sense, right? Well, what is AI doing now? It's, a, it's eliminated a shit ton of jobs, a shit ton of jobs, and they plan on keep building it, right? Um, we don't even know what is real that we read on the Internet anymore. And it means Google and everything. We created Google. Us, the people. We created Google by the questions that we asked, right? Um, we don't, we don't know what is facts and what's not facts on the internet anymore. It's, it's, it's crazy. And, and have we ever? Think about it. Who, who created, who created newspapers? Who, cre who dictates what's on them newspapers? And I, I'm telling you, right. I'll tell you right now, it's dictated because if I say something that don't go in line about our government or the three-letter agencies, and it don't go in line with what they tell the people they are, if I question what they're doing, they will eliminate my content. So I know they dictate what goes into the newspaper. Mark Zuckerberg said it himself on the Rogan Show. He says, the three-letter agencies and the G word dictate what can be done and what is being controlled on Facebook. So we don't even know what is facts and not factual. And we might not never have. Just because it's in the newspaper in black and white doesn't make it valid. Doesn't make it facts. Now I'm not saying there's not facts in any newspaper you read or any new or, or any news channel you, you watch, but all of those CNN, Fox, 
They're all day. You think a company such as Fox or CNN can get up there and just say whatever they want about the most highly protected organ, in my opinion, criminal organization, right? They steal all our money. They, they enslave people. They make people just barely make it, right? And we're okay with that. My, my, my opinion, those three letter agencies and the G word is a criminal organization. But the truth is, you, do you really think that the people of power want to lose that? They want to lose that power? No. It, it, look, divide and conquer, they, they've been doing that with this BGTB, LGT, rainbow fucking bullshit, cocaine in the White House. Listen, this is what I'm trying to say. Look, does any of that matter? Like, does any of that... Uh, 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 race bullshit. Listen, I, I want, I've said this in many of my videos too, is I'm in society with interracial people every single freaking day. And we work with that as well in decluttering interracial, which means every single race there is, right? Never. Not in many, many years. When I was in prison, there was some racial shit going on, right? Never since I've been in business dealing with people of all races have I have I even felt a hint of racism in my direction. None. The shit. Don't, listen, if it exists, that's their shit. They're an idiot, right? If so, if somebody's in the back of their head still, oh, kill whitey or kill by whatever they think, whatever. That's their ignorance, right? None of that shit matters. But they throw that in our in our face. This is what I'm telling you. The news, CNN and Fox, it's all dictated to keep people divided. That's what it is. That's, that's why I believe Democrats and Republicans was created. It was created to keep people divided and not together. Does it not make sense? Only color I care about is green. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And it created that too. We'll slave these people. We'll make them chase the green dollar bill for the rest of their life. Well, they can't see the big picture because they're too focused on getting stacks and stacks and stacks of money. It's just a bunch of, it's all, in my opinion, now listen, that's my theory, ladies and gentlemen, nobody's got to believe that, and I'm not trying to say any of that is factual, but I will tell you right now, everything on the internet, everything on CNN, everything on Fox News, everything on all these broadcasting channels, besides a few that get very low views because they're disagreeing with what the majority think, right? Or they're, or they're, or they're, uh, uh, conspiracy theorists, right? Every one of them channels are highly censored. Okay? If you don't believe me, get get off this video right now. Open up open up a Facebook Live and start bashing our, bashing our government. Or start bashing in the three-letter agencies. Or do some real research and figure out what's going on and put your two cents in there and see what happens to your video. I bet you it's took down within, within 24 hours. It's all censored. So it's being censored by this group of criminals, right, that take our money and do everything else. This group of criminals that they can get caught with cocaine, right, and, and nobody gets held accountable. But if me and Victor gets caught with whatever amount of cocaine, we're in prison, right? Like, they don't live by the laws we live by. They, these, these agencies and shit, they don't live by the same laws me and you live by. They don't, not whatsoever. They get away with murder and embezzlement and all kinds of money laundering bullshit that happens from country to country. The war to war, start a war so we can money launder some freaking money this way and this way and make it come back to us and blah, 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 right? It's all a bunch of, it's a bunch of criminal shit. But anyways, I don't even know how I got off on that rant, but uh, you guys know me and I tend to do that. Um, but that's my opinion of AI on eBay. Keep, keep, keep using their AI. Before you know it, you, me and you won't be needed anymore. Now, I talked about this a while ago about eBay because I think, I don't think I think different than other people. Maybe I do. Um, I mean, I think everybody thinks a little different. That's what makes us all unique, right? But I've been thinking for a long time, how could I do this without physically doing this? Right? And people be like, oh, that's just... That's just a fantasy every reseller had. How could I do this without actually doing this? Well, you could hire people, that's for sure. Or AI. Or you could have AI. So you think eBay, that is a billion dollar industry. Oh yeah, eBay. Oh yeah. List list from your phone one time. 
this from your phone and in the item descriptions when you're or not the item description when you're filling out the description of your item whether there's wear on it or whatever size measurements all that good stuff where you would do that at you have the option to select the ai and it only takes about four seconds and it completely writes a description of your item that you could have never thought of i don't give a fuck i don't care who you are you couldn't have made a description look that good like it makes your description look like top notch it is top notch right and i'm not saying it's a bad it's bad but if we continue to use that system listen ebay is a billion dollar industry okay you think they're not trying to figure out a way as well to eliminate us the resellers how can we do that's what the way they think we don't think that way because we're not billionaires if me and you vic are billionaires we're, we would probably be looking into AI, too. How can I eliminate some cost here, right? It, 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 if, you're, if, if you have a huge business such as eBay, right, McDonald's, Walmart, whatever it is, right? If you had a huge business like this, and there's X amount of dollars coming in a day, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you. It'd be a wild assumption on every one of them. But I know it's millions of dollars a day, at least, okay? So if you're bringing in that kind of money a day... How would you be thinking? We don't think like that because we're not bringing in millions of dollars a day. And if we did, I wouldn't be making a podcast about uh, eBay or AI, right? Maybe about AI, right? But what were, where would your thoughts be going? Oh, I could cut out millions of dollars a day or millions of dollars a year a day. I don't know what it would be. If we brought AI in and like there's going to be a lot of corporations there's going to be a lot of businesses that's going to buy into this ai shit and it's going to eliminate our value it's going to eliminate people's value you don't believe that pay attention every every penny counts when you're that big absolutely man you know how much taxes you pay on a million dollars when mcdonald's quit putting two slices of cheese they saved millions absolutely people don't realize vix just hit like hit the nail on the head People don't realize, you know what, you can add this to eBay too. If you're only doing 10 items a day, if you're only doing 5, 10 items a day, 20 items a day, 30, whatever your, whatever your goal, target is on eBay, you don't think that's a lot. Do that shit for 5 years. It's a fucking lot. Before you know it, you got freaking 10,000, 15,000 items in your inventory. It is a lot. We... We tend to, when we don't have a lot of money or or, or or business ain't floating yet, we we tend to look at, oh my God, 30 items a day, that's a lot. No, it's it's really not. It don't take that long, but it adds up. It's the same thing with saving money. Vic said, uh, and instead of putting two slices of cheese, um, they went to putting one slice of cheese at McDonald's, and it saved millions of dollars, right? How many burgers do you think is coming out of McDonald's a day? I have one. Right, and then you multiply all the franchises that's across the country. It's, it's, yeah, I agree. It's probably millions of dollars a day, right? So the whole thing is, is if we keep using AI, you're me and you are going to have no value anymore. Vic drives truck. I do believe Vic drives truck. I was watching an episode a while back ago. On the AI, they're 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 creating for semi trucks. It's gonna fuck a lot of people, man. It's gonna fuck a lot of truck drivers. Uh, they 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 they're like they're like ninety eight point some percent accurate of not getting an accident, but the catastrophic event in that one point some percent of an accident happening with AI, a uh, semi a semi a semi is heavy. Right. So you can't have it can't have it's got to have zero margin for failure. And they were at like ninety eight point some percent. So in another five to ten years, I'm sure they're going to work them kinks out and they're going to eliminate the need for all truck drivers. That's fucking nuts, man. They're taking our value away in America, in the United States. They're, they're taking the value away from us. And when that happens, they're going to have more power than they've ever had since me and you, Vic, has ever existed and our parents ever existed or anything. Because when they don't need you and I to 
make production and money work, the mar make the marketplace work in the United States, when they no longer need you and me to make that happen, oh, a lot of shit's going to change. Motherfuckers are going to be slaves. We're going to be, we're already modern day slaves. Fully loaded, 80,000 pounds, takes over a football field to stop. Right. That's fucking nuts, man. That's nuts. There's some cool facts right there Vic just putting out. So, what, 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 if you, look at the power they have over us now. Look at the censorship on social media. Do you get on social media and say some political shit that isn't in line with what propaganda's putting out there? Or, 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 or Fox News or CNN. Go say, a, and then, first of all, you're going to be called a conspiracy theorist because you don't believe like the rest of the people believe, right? Which is, is if you believe like everybody else, you're the sheep. If you believe what everybody else believes, you're a fucking sheep, right? That That's the first thing. I love it when people are like, you're a conspiracy theorist. I'm like, thumbs up, sheep, keep following the herd. Thumbs up, sheep, keep following the herd. If you can't lean on your own conscience and your own understanding of what is right and what is wrong, and you can't see through the bullshit, you're just following a fucking herd, man. You're following the fucking herd right to the grave. You're, you're just, oh, because they said it on CNN, it's facts. Man, because they said it on Fox News, it's facts. Because he's a Republican, I can't stand him. Because he's a Democrat, I can't stand him. Man, wake the fuck up. Everybody's got different viewpoints. People will separate. Listen, it's it's... Divide and conquer. Okay, it's the oldest trick in the book. They've been using it for centuries. Divide and conquer. It's what they're doing. That's, that's the whole point of Republican and Democrat. It keeps people apart. If we all united in the United States, this video might get took down, matter of fact. If we, if we put our differences to the side, most of us in the United States want our kids safe. Most of us want to feel safe. Most of us want a fair living, right? Where you're not... Oh my God, here comes this bill and I'm stressed and I'm worried and am I going to lose my mortgage? So most of us want financial security. Most of us want safety. Most of us want police in our streets, policing our streets, right? Most of us want healthy food. Most of, yeah, you, you get it. 99.5% of the people in the United States all want the same thing. And they know that. So they throw all this division out there, race division, freaking queer division or whatever you want to call it, gay division. I don't give a fuck if you're gay. I don't give a fuck if you're this color. I don't give a shit if you're that color. It doesn't make a fucking difference to my life. I don't care. And nobody else should care. Who cares if that person decides to to like men or like women? Who gives a shit? I don't give a flying fudge. Right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care. None of this shit matters. Do you see how ignorant we the people are to allow that to divide us beautiful people. I've seen beautiful people in every single nationality in my life, and I've seen ugly motherfuckers in every single race in my life. I've seen ugly motherfuckers in every race, and I've seen beautiful people in every race. Most people are beautiful. That's my experience of going on 42 years of living. Most people want... Most people are good people, right? But there you do got them select few... That they're just fucking deserve to be in prison or wherever else, right? Um, and I'm not saying that they couldn't have been a good person, right? But my whole thing is, most people want the same thing. As long as they keep us divided, you, don't you notice that everything's divided? Democrat, Republican, black, white, gay, straight. It's all fucking division tactics. Keep us divided because if a big Peace Corps come in or, or some type of peace where all the people in the United States just decided to pull together, and chill out about your whatever's been put in your head from the news. It, it, just pay attention to the news. What the news does. What it, it stirs the pot. All it does is stirs the pot. All CNN does. All Fox News does. All political bullshit. All it does is stirs the pot. That's all it does. Keeps people bickering over here so they can keep running their fucking show over here. That's all it does. And you know what? They know through enough research of humans... Right? They know it. What do you think NASA and all these big freaking uh, uh, chemist era places and things they don't let you know about? What do you think they're doing in them places? They're studying us to be able to dictate us. They're creating chemical war. They're doing all this shit, right? I, I don't know exactly everything they're doing, but think about it. Just use your fucking brain, man. 
What do you think they're doing in these top secret places that they don't they won't let us know what they're doing? Do you think they're studying fucking aliens? I fucking highly doubt it. They're figuring out how to continue to dictate us so they they hold the power. It's all about power. Every it's always been about power. Everything's always been about power. Come on. Supposedly Christopher Columbus come over here and took the Native Americans uh, land, right? It's all about conquer, power and conquer, right? And as long as they keep all of us in the United States divided with LGBT and black on white and white on black crime, which is fucking going to happen anywhere you go. I don't give a fuck who you are and what country you're in. You know, I, I'll tell you what. I, 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 I rephrase that. People in other countries don't see us as color, gay, straight, anything. They see us as Americans. Nobody outside of this country looks at them as like, oh, they're a gay American. Oh, they're a straight American. Oh, they're they're an African American. Oh, they're a Caucasian American. Oh, they're Latin American. None of them do that. They look at all of us. They look at us the right way. We're all Americans. Why can't we in our own country look at all of us as fucking Americans? And most of us want the same thing, right? Why can't we do that? Because every fucking device that's shoved in our freaking faces, your TV, your cell phone, your this, it's propaganda, it's divide, it's divide. Oh, this white officer beat this black guy, this black guy officer beat this white guy, this gay person got punched by this straight guy. It's all stupid. It's going to happen. Look, listen, white people are going to break the law, right? And a black officer is going it, it probably deserves to beat that white guy's ass, probably, right? Not, not to the point maybe they die, and vice versa. A black guy's going to commit a crime, and there's going to be a white officer, right? There's going to be a gay person, and there's going to be a straight person, and they're going to have disagreements, and somebody's going to get punched in the face. Oh, fucking well. We jump onto that shit and, 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 and stir it all up and make it ten times bigger than it fucking actually is, and I'm not saying nothing about the guy that lost his life over the cop beating or whatever. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about that. What's the bullshit, right? And I do believe there is some racism out there, right? But but I do believe it is very minimal these days. Come on, man. I'm in society. I'm I'm all the way farthest way out in the redneck sticks of the country and have no problem. And I'm all the way furthest way in the inner cities and I don't have no fucking problem. And, and I'm not saying I'm invincible. What I'm saying is I work with every fucking buddy. And nobody's made a racist slur to me yet. I don't know. Did they want to? I don't know. Maybe they did, right? But it's all divide and conquer, man. That's all it is, man. Think about it. Read, read a pale, uh, uh, a pale white horse. Read that book. Matter of fact, it's pretty hard to come by anymore. Um, there's some other books you can read. Um, educate yourself. Stop, stop relying on CNN, Fox News, and what the fucking social media is putting in your head. They're fucking brainwashing people. I am telling you, they're legitimately brainwashing people. If you look at the way people walk around today and the interaction people have within each other, they are perfectly dividing people. People don't stand in grocery stores and talk for fucking an hour and a half anymore. They don't do it. Very seldom. I find myself making my conversations real short. Why? Because I'm distracted by everything else that's going on. Keep feeding into this AI shit. We're going to be worthless. It's your boy Flip Stoop. You guys have a rock and rad day.